Hey there. Welcome into another supply chain update presented by World Courier, an Amerisource Bergen company. I'm Andrew Cox, Senior Retail Analyst here at FreightWaves, but today we're speaking all about cell and gene therapy commercialization and how we're going to have to redefine the supply chain to store and carry these therapies. And with me to discuss is Keegan Moore, Regional Sales Director for World Courier. Keegan, thanks for taking the time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Andrew. So Keegan, let's start with just a quick overview of the cell and gene therapy field. Yeah, so uh, you know the concept of gene therapy was originally introduced back in the late '70s, but uh, we've seen significant growth over the last five years in the space. And just for some context for everybody, in, in 2015 there were just over about 670 companies uh, globally in the regenerative medicine space, with financings of around 10.5 uh, billion dollars. But by the end of 2020. We're now at over 1,100 companies globally, and financings are close to $20 billion. So there's just been significant growth within the space, and uh, we and the industry continues to expect to see this growth over the, over the next five years. Um, you know, For a little background on the cell and gene therapy uh, space, medical advances have really allowed for the creation of these targeted, uh, personalized, and, and curative treatments for patients, and that involves re replacing manipulating or, or engineering cells and or genetic material to fight various diseases. You know, cell therapies are treatments that involve inserting manipulated human cells into the patient to treat diseases. And they can really be split up into two different types of, of therapies. There's autologous cell therapies where the patient receives modified cells from their own cellular population. And then there's allogeneic therapies where several patients are treated with with donor cells. And so the supply chain is really different for both of the uh, different um, cell therapy programs that are run. Um, when it comes to gene therapies, on the other hand, um, these are treatments that are introducing genetic material into the patient's DNA to replace faulty or, or missing genes in order to modify correct defects that uh, ultimately cause the disease. So there's a few different supply chains that are being ran here, but Ultimately, it's the advanced in the therapies that are at the forefront of the innovation and really bring so much hope for the future of medicine. And they really are transforming how we treat and potentially cure these diseases. But with that, of course, comes new considerations for pharma developers and the nature of these treatments and the use of their living cells or genetic material really create new challenges and dependencies that disrupt the traditional commercialization process. And now, for the first time, the patient is really at the, the heart of the supply chain. And Keegan, can we talk more about the, com the commercialization model? Can you tell us more about the gene and cell therapy commercialization model? How does it differ from traditional models? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's one of the most challenging questions that needs to be addressed for the manufacturers. Um, the prevailing model of supply chains and, and patient programs for small molecules and biologics really evolves linearly from clinical to commercial. Uh, each individual component, although it's complex, there are marginal dependencies between them. Um, now, however, when it comes to cell and gene therapies, we're now talking about an interconnected and personalized model, which requires a higher degree of integration between specialized logistics partners, patient programs, and the health outcomes evidence, which are required to drive physician adoption. So. A patient's treatment has entirely different dependencies and a different sequence of events. And as a result, the decisions a manufacturer will make during the clinical trials now have huge implications on the commercial supply chain down the road. You know, en enabling the patient access to these novel therapies is contingent on successfully navigating the journey from clinical development to commercialization. But the supply chain needs to be completely redefined as people are now part of the overall supply chain. And you know, the focus on the human material supply chain is, is vital, of course, but it's the scheduling, the access, the logistics dependencies, they're all equally important and they add a layer of complexity into the entire process. So regardless of the reason of the breakdown in the supply chain, whether it be the manufacturing cycle or logistics coordination or shipping process, they all have an extremely high cost. And you know, at best, it's an ex expensive and disruptive for the manufacturer if anything goes wrong. But at worst, it could it could be catastrophic with the potential to adversely impact patient outcomes. Yeah, patients receiving these therapies are also contingent on the physical navigation of these from point A to point B. So let's talk about the shipping and storage requirements from for moving cell and gene therapies from point A to point B. 
Yeah, you know, although the specifics of each treatment, they're, they're going to vary, um, but they all have one thing in common. Each therapy is going to be composed of living cells with extremely limited lifespans. So it's absolutely critical that the therapies are transported uh, both on time, but also in pristine condition, both to and from the manufacturer and ultimately to the treatment site where the patient's administered with the drug. Um Following the completion of the manufacturing process, the drug products usually cryopreserved and, and placed inside a dry vapor shipper and shipped to a storage facility or directly to a treatment site for administration. The storage conditions of the cells throughout the entire process are going to be extremely critical to ensure uh, the integrity of the drug. And, and gene therapies typically are going to require minimum storage temperature of minus 80 C where cell therapies are primarily going to be stored at minus 190 C or excuse me, 196 uh, degrees Celsius or below. And so these ultra temperatures, uh, ultra cold temperatures are essentially require three key factors when you're selecting both your storage facility, but also your logistics provider to ensure that cold chain um, storage conditions are withheld. So one, you know, working with a partner that can provide um, designated shipping containers that can support extremely cold temperatures must be used for gene, cell and gene therapies. Uh, two common types of containers will include dry ice shippers and dry, uh, dry nitrogen vapor shippers. Now, we do have access to a new technology that's recently come out that offers um, LN2 free systems as well. Uh, two to eight C or controlled room temperature shippers are also could be a requirement depending on the um, pharmaceutical developers' needs for shipping a product. But whatever container we opt for or that's going to be used, uh, real-time temperature monitors should be included to ensure that nothing uh, affects the shipment after it's been deployed from the, the pickup location. Due to the nature of the advanced therapies, um, only cryogenic storage can assure the safety and efficacy um, you know, within the approved shelf life of each batch. A global cryogenic storage infrastructure is going to be vital um, and it's going to be required to getting patients the, the therapies locally. So when a patient is identified, the hospital is going to be ordering the cell therapies like a, a traditional therapy. Um, and the cell therapy is going to be sent from a pharmaceutical storage location directly to the hospital where the patient can, can then be treated. Lastly, uh, manufacturing, logistics, storage capabilities, they all must be able to scale up and scale out to serve an increasing number of patients while additional stakeholders now become part of the supply chain. The commercial supply chain is essentially the clinical supply chain, only further reaching and, and really a lot more complex. So the demand for cell and gene therapy products are becoming global. And as a result, the scaled out supply chain will cross international boundaries, um, time zones, and climatic regions. So Selecting the, the right logistics partner will really help therapy owners navigate these challenges while reducing risk, but uh, most importantly, they're going to be an integral part of the solution to ultimately delivering that treatment to the patient. Now, it, it's really important that these strategic decisions are made at the beginning or the front end to help scale for these studies long term. Uh, any poor manufacturing decision or supply chain processes could significantly impact product viability, uh, adoption, and could result in an unsuccessful study or even approval. Um, but you know, ultimately, by involving te the technical expertise of a logistics partner and allowing full visibility into the supply chain, um, we can add value then to the therapy and its ultimate, uh, ultimate ability to deliver uh, patient benefit. And Keegan, how can World Courier support those therapies? Yeah, so World Courier is the market-leading logistics platform developer for advanced therapies. Um, we manage time-sensitive, temperature-critical, and highly valuable shipments uh, throughout our highly specialized network of de dedicated teams. So um, our, our logistics platform has been managed uh, or is used to manage critical shipments all over the world. And to date, we manage over 2,000 clinical sites globally through our network of 140 uh, GDP compliant offices in 50 countries. But we're really able to do this because we operate off of a single quality system, which really ties our transport and our depot storage together. Um, whether it's donations of critical blood samples or delivery of final therapies, it's our quality system that enables us to deliver shipments of live cells across international and domestic boundaries 
while ensuring the cell vi viability and the transport security. Um, our, our global depot network has, has doubled our capacity for cryogenic storage this year, and uh, Wilker is going to continue to invest and expand our network in the coming years. Standardized processes have, have been put in place to ensure that our global network is not only properly trained, but experienced across all locations um, and, and is really standardized across the entire network. Um, we complete our quality pipeline uh, between GMP and GCP, which is good clinical practices, by offering a fully compliant GDP office network or good uh, distribution um, office network. And really what that helps us do is ensure that the, our, our therapies can flow through our quality, prod, our, our quality network and ultimately to the patient successfully. Now, in addition, Wilker also offers a range of temperature-controlled packaging solutions, uh, some of which I mentioned earlier, cryogenic shippers, uh, refrigerated 2 to 8, controlled room temperature 15 to 25, and frozen and, and dry ice shippers. So we would work with the client um, and, and really identify the packaging solutions that makes the most sense for their particular study. But as part of the logistics platform, we've also actively sought out industry-leading technologies that help us support therapy developers as they're continuing to scale out their programs. And just a few examples of the, the partnerships that we have are with organizations like SAFSU, uh, Traxel, Venetti, Cryoport, and Cytiva. Uh, and, and really what that allows us to do and, and is that we're not just moving boxes for our customers. Uh, we understand that the collaboration is essential to the creation of the clinical and commercial scale logistics platforms. And, and thanks to this, we're, we're ultimately able to uh, build precisely tailored solutions uh, for our customers' requirements within this space. Lastly, I just wanted to add that Will Courier is part of the Amerisource Bergen cell and gene therapy ecosystem. Uh, what this really means for our customers is that we're able to collaborate with our sister companies and can bring expertise uh, in each area that's required for successful commercialization. And I think that's something that's truly unique with Amerisource Bergen and World Couriers that we can partner with companies very early on in the R&D and clinical stage, but support their efforts all the way through to commercialization. Um, whether it's you know, patient support services, strategic consulting, um, product sourcing, uh, supply chain management, <clears throat> or global specialty logistics, we can tie it all together uh, at Amerisource Bergen. And it's really the collaboration across our business segments that allows us to effectively partner uh, with developers from clinical all the way through to commercialization. And it's really what helps unite us and our responsibility to create healthier futures for everybody. Well, Keegan, this has been very insightful and informative. I thank you so much for your time and insights today. Everyone, this has been Keegan Moore, Regional Sales Director at World Courier and Amerisource Bergen Company. Thanks so much, Keegan. Thank you. Everyone stay tuned for more supply chain updates presented by World Courier right here on FreightWaves.com.